Hi, my name is Tommy Rodriguez. I'm a graduate student at the University of Florida in the Ecological Restoration Program. Today, I want to talk to you about the application of computational phylogenetics for plant conservation. I should start by telling you a little bit about myself and how I came to specialize in phylogenetics at one point. I obtained a master's degree in biotechnology in 2012. My specialization was in bioinformatics with an interest in computational phylogenetics. In graduate school, I reconstructed many phylogenies using a variety of computational biology applications and publicly available genomic databases. These days, I seek to consolidate my background in biotechnology with ecological restoration for a path toward conservation genetics. Before addressing how computational phylogenetics can be used in plant conservation, we should first begin by properly defining computational phylogenetics as a field of study. We'll go with the most basic definition. Computational phylogenetics is the application of computational algorithms, methods, and programs to phylogenetic analysis. The goal of computational phylogenetics is to assemble, build, or construct phylogenetic trees representing a hypothesis about the evolutionary ancestry of a set of genes, species, or taxa. Generally speaking, a phylogenetic tree can be defined as a diagram showing a series of evolutionary pathways from a common ancestor to different descendants. And it describes these evolutionary pathways via divergent events that split series of nodes into corresponding taxa. There are essentially two lines of data that we examine when reconstructing phylogenies, morphology and genetics. For purposes of this discussion, we'll stick to genetics as it deals directly with the topic of genetic diversity in plant populations. To greater or lesser extents, all organisms share molecular variation patterns due entirely to their common ancestry to one another. In phylogeny research, Two types of trees are most commonly used in practice, rooted and unrooted trees. A rooted tree is a tree in which one of the nodes is stipulated to be the root, and the direction of ancestral relationships is determined in a nested hierarchy of outgroup and ingroup lineages. As you move from the root to the tips, you are moving forward in time. The nodes located on a rooted tree are considered a point of speciation, or the event where populations diverge into new distinct species. Unrooted trees can also be useful in showing general relatedness between and among organisms, but do not necessarily imply an ancestral root. Edge lengths, also known as branches, are important features of phylogenetic trees, as they can be interpreted as rough time estimates. Building a phylogenetic tree from genomic data as a primary biomarker requires the application of several different computational techniques. However, the very first step in any tree building exercise starts with a well thought out experiment design. This is when we think about the topic that we are interested in investigating and essentially how it will be executed. Next, the researcher must decide on sequence selection followed by data collection and analysis. Lastly, the algorithms one chooses towards sequence alignment and distance matrix modeling is a final critical step for reconstructing a phylogeny where utilizing the right combination of methods can result in better resolution and overall accuracy. So, now we ask the question, how does computational phylogenetics play a role in conservation genetics, and how can it be useful for plant conservation? Here, I've categorized a few generalized areas where computational phylogenetic techniques have been previously applied toward plant conservation it should be emphasized that these areas are not mutually exclusive and often overlap with one another. Evolutionary heritage. Phylogenetics is the basis for organizing and retrieving all current knowledge about biodiversity, either structural or functional in evolutionary contexts. And recent findings suggest that if we want to preserve functioning ecosystems, we should take special consideration towards saving evolutionary distant species. It's thought that an ecosystem based on distantly related plants might be more productive than one based on closely related plants, since the distant relatives would be more likely to have evolved to occupy distinct niches. 
biodiversity monitoring. As we have seen during the first half of this course, genetic diversity is important to plant conservation. Taking a phylogenetic approach, we can reach inferences about the various degrees of genetic relatedness among plant communities. This can be achieved in several ways, but in terms of phylogeny research, one can calculate the branch lengths separating each species on a tree. How are branch lengths relevant to assessing biodiversity? Well, studies have shown that calculating branch lengths is a more reliable predictor of biomass than the number of species or ecological types. Biogeographical distribution. Human activities have displaced many plant populations or introduced invasive ones into new environments. Phylogenetic studies that look at plant biogeography suggest what may be a general principle, namely that under many circumstances it may be easier for species to migrate into an area with at least some of the relevant adaptations having already evolved than it is for those adaptations to evolve in that new environment. And lastly, extinction risks. Plant species worldwide are facing the threat of climate change. Phylogenetic studies are now revealing that ecological niches are more conserved through evolutionary history than expected, implying that adaptations to major climate change events have not readily been accomplished in all lineages. Phylogenetics has important consequences for the assembly of both local communities and the regional gene pools from which they are drawn. These peer-reviewed studies have each shed light on plant conservation practices using phylogenetic analysis. Figure four illustrates how the amount of phylogenetic diversity within communities explains more about variation in plant community biomass than other measures of diversity, such as the number of species or functional groups. Their results reveal how evolutionary history can provide critical information for understanding and predicting the effects of biodiversity loss and to serve as an example for new biodiversity experiments. Led by researchers at the University of Florida, Figure 5 is part of a study that examined the spatial phylogenetics of vascular plants. Their investigation involved 4,000 vascular plant species that are known to occur in Florida. Making spatial predictions of biodiversity is important for pinpointing the locations or communities requiring immediate or long-term protection. Finally, for demonstration purposes, I assembled a small-scale phylogeny of native milkweed based on the RBCL gene. The RBCL gene is a valuable tool for assessing phylogenetic relationships. This gene is found in the chloroplasts of most photosynthetic organisms. It is an abundant protein in leaf tissue and very well may be the most abundant protein on Earth. Given the recent concerns over the introduction of competing non-native tropical milkweed, which harbors a deadly parasite that has affected monarch butterfly populations, I thought this inquiry might be worth examining. So, let's briefly run through this scenario by starting from a null hypothesis perspective. I search and collect my sequence data in FASTA format from the NCBI nucleotide database. I import, then export my data set as a multiple sequence alignment file using a computational biology program such as Eugene. And lastly, I build my phylogenetic trees using the base pair alignment obtained from the MSA procedure described in the previous step. Here are the results. Looking at this phylogenetic tree, we may be able to draw inferences from different interdependent scenarios involving plant conservation. For instance, one can compare the degrees of genetic diversity and evolutionary relatedness among these species and map their overlapping biogeographical statuses, including those of newly introduced non-native varieties like the tropical milkweed. This brief example highlights the opportunities for computational phylogenetics and plant conservation when done on grander scales. My recommendation to restoration practitioners and scientists is to utilize computational phylogenetics as a strategy for increasing options for future needs and values in plant conservation, as well as for increasing the potential of biodiversity in a future environment. At the end of this presentation, I provided links to resources and downloads for those interested in incorporating phylogenetic analysis into their plant conservation efforts. The wonderful thing about computational phylogenetics is that sophisticated laboratory settings are generally not required. Your computer is your lab, and hundreds of thousands of genomic sequences are available at your fingertips. It may take years of training to become proficient at building phylogenies, but with the proper tools and practice, 
Practitioners and restoration scientists can use these applications in areas of plant conservation. Thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed this presentation.